baby beard. <laughs> Waited for you, Fry. This episode traumatized me as a young person. <laughs> my head is hurting again. <laughs> Where's my firstborn son? <laughs> God does not care about me masturbating. Your singing is bad and you should feel bad. <laughs> <laughs> First get out into bus, so you're like, oh no. Yeah. <laughs> Don't like myself becoming the protagonist of this well, podcast. <laughs> <laughs> You've been in the Yeah, because you haven't learned anything. Been Shut up and take my podcast. That's sweet, sweet Italian tone. <laughs> mm, isn't you can do that because you are... A little bit of Italian. A little bit of Italian. 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 Just enough that you have to um, make sure no wine glasses are in front of me because I'll knock them over when I'm yelling at you. Your (laughs) wild gestures. Yes. So so we have a, a Brit... An Italian and a German. If you have a wine glass in front of all three of us, what do we respectively do? War. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, who's allies? I quaff. Who, you, who you are quaff? allies? <laughs> <laughs> I'm German, so I do, what, what is the? You're the bad guy. I'm the bad guy. So what, do most we just, times, <laughs> do we just do we just drink it? <laughs> You're also the bad guy. If we're going on the same yeah, conflict, yeah, but we were like. You were worse at we, it. We were worse because we, when we knew we were losing, we were just like, uh, ah. <laughs> we, uh, we were worse, but forget about uh, it. Forget know, about it's it. It's not about it. Do you know my... Forget about the Second World War. My, forget about it. My great uncle, he learned two English phrases while I was staying with him for a few months. Uh, and it was, um, I don't know, doesn't matter. <laughs> So great. So that for basically World War be- Two. You just became I don't a- know, doesn't matter. You just became a New York American. Yeah, basically. Yeah, yeah. Basically, yeah. But you know what we do know? What we do, do we? know that this what podcast is called Shut Up and Take My Podcast. Oh. The Futurama Podcast that bits episode against episode and bloody glorious gauntlet battle for your entertainment, <laughs> mate. I, I was just going to say that wow. was r- racist, but then you... Did all three. Yeah. You can't be racist if you're if offensive you're to everybody. If you're deeply misunderstood <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. what the thing you're making fun of is. <laughs> and I'm joined here by... Mr. Phil. Hi, Animatronio! (laughs) By Ellen! Take me by the hand, and I will explain why I find you so repulsive. (laughs) Oh, I've been waiting. (laughs) Oh, lovely. And And we're we're joined joined by by Sean. I have a bit of a raging brainer going on at the (laughs) moment. Oh, no! I can see it from here. What What do you do to get rid of it? Uh, watch Big Bang Theory. <laughs> <laughs> just, just kill that part of your yeah, brain. Yeah. <laughs> There's a lot of other side effects that go along with that, but I'll take it. I'll take it. Ooh, misogyny. Womp womp. Bazinga, am I right, guys? <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, 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 toxic. Oh, reference. <laughs> uh, just season six. I've written season four here. That's wrong. <laughs> season six. Episode 5, The Da Vinci Code, Woo-hoo. which is a reference to what? Uh, the Da Vinci Code. The Da Vinci duh. Code, and also the classic joke of going, uh, duh. Duh. <laughs> yeah. Such it's a classic. It's a classic. <laughs> the oldest uh, <laughs> from the best. Like, what would you attribute that quote to? Like, <laughs> Mean Girls? Or <laughs> uh, mean Girls? Way too late for that. You've uh. got to... Uh, that's Clueless. Clueless? Like, 90, yeah. like 1995? Yeah, Mean Girls is a 2000s film. 2003. Can... Someone write to us, an entomologist, write to us, or etymologist, yep. not an insect person. <laughs> no. I mean, you could if you <laughs> wanted. If you know it. If you, you know, know it, it, write to us. Still write it. Sure. <laughs> like, and tell us what the origin of duh is. Because we won't Google it. I no. made all these bugs act out Mean Girls. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I'd pay to Perfect see that. content, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds great. Um, so the director for this episode really wish I'd have looked up the pronunciation of the last name, but that's Pre- fine. Ramey. No, okay, I'll leave it. Musquiz. Can I have a look? Yeah, go for it. Uh, just hand over the book <coughs> there. <coughs> uh, um, um, I can't even... Uh, the writer. No, no? the director. I, I said, uh, what? Musquiz. <laughs> I don't know. It's, 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 it's my turn. <laughs> right, yeah, we go. Pass it around. Eventually, we will get it. Uh, Musquiz. Director Remy Musquiz. That's Beautiful. my Okay, well, we've got three different best. pronunciations. One of them will be... It's not... Musquiz. It's definitely not Italian, no. I don't think. So one of those will be incorrect, and obviously the other two will be incorrect as well. <laughs> also, <laughs> yes. Uh, so this is Remy's uh, debut. By the way, for your listeners out there, it's M-U-Z-Q-U-I-Z. Do what you will with that. Mm. Uh, so yeah, Remy, good old Remy. He's our first time director. He was. Uh, he has been attributed as working on an animation called Big Bug Man. Now, why this is... <laughs> Are you so oh excited by that? Well, yeah, because we were talking Talk about, about bug experts. Oh, yeah, okay, now, yeah, I'm, bo- I'm bored. This had Brendan Brendan Fraser, 
Holy shit. What? And Marlon Brando. What? what? In what? the final role before he died. <laughs> what? <laughs> he recorded this about two months before he died. Um, and he plays a woman. And to the point Did where... Did I just wake up in an <laughs> alternate reality? It has not been released yet. It yes. was... Yeah, this silly yeah. post-production. They're sitting yeah. on it. Sitting like, on it. And keep in mind, I think Brando died somewhere between, I think, 2006? Uh, or it's been like over 10 years yeah. since he died. It's mm. been a while. And he apparently, even during the recording, he, cause he he plays a woman of some kind, like an older woman, I think. Uh-huh. To the point where they said he even put on a wig and put on all the regalia. Oh, because he's all about that method. Yes. That's right. Yes. Uh, yeah, so they're, um, they're that. So he worked on that. So one day we may see Big Bug Man. God. Okay, I really, I can't wait. I, I'm really excited. Actually, <laughs> <laughs> it sounds um, great. Now the writer for this episode is Maya Williams, uh, who I've mentioned before as the uh, partner in both life and professionally of Patrick M. Verone. Hmm. But in her own right, this is her debut episode as a solo writer. And she also is a writer of children's novels, uh, one Aww. of which she did is called The Golden Hour, which is a time travel uh, book set in the French Revolution. Well, that sounds... It's good content for kids, isn't it? Uh, uh, yeah. Young adult, maybe? I don't know. You know what? Kids should learn about the guillotine. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Graphic 10-page descriptions of early guillotine. End, <laughs> early and often, I should say, if we want to kick this revolution off. Do you oh, know you what I mean? T- Teach the kids about civil unrest. Yeah. You yeah. should. Yeah. yeah. So that when heads start being lopped off left, right and centre. Hey, maybe that will, that's what the kids in Australia who just did a climate protest. They should be rounding up the politicians and guillotining them. Yep. And if you're listening to this much later, <laughs> that's a thing that happened around the time that we recorded. Uh, we would like to uh, uh, say an apology for all the you know leaders of this country who have died because of us suggesting that we should guillotine them. We have Except a lot I'm more not pull. sorry. We have a lot more pull than I realise. <laughs> <That's great. laughs> We're a cultural touchstone in exactly. our own imagination. Yeah. <laughs> We're putting the message out there, and the (laughs) people who want to listen, they'll listen. And while we're chucking dates around the place, uh, this episode aired a week... I just got hit by a date. I'm so sorry, man. (laughs) So sorry. I'll be more careful. (laughs) 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 What what, what, what was it? Was it uh, April 25th? I can't remember the joke. Fuck, Miss Congeniality. When she's asked, what what would be your f- perfect date? And she's like, April 25th, because it's not too hot, not too cold. All you need is a light jacket. It's <laughs> <laughs> the best joke ever. I prefer my joke, so... <laughs> oh. well, so this episode... Uh, Sorry. Well, <laughs> aired a week after my 19th birthday. <laughs> July the 15th, 2010. So I'd been 19 for a week. By this point, how's it been? Right. Isn't that also closer to your birthday, Phil? Uh, what did you say it was on? The uh, the fifteenth of July. It's the day after my birthday. Oh. this was released. Yeah. Happy birthday! Too far from yeah, my thanks. birthday to do the math, <laughs> <laughs> so I shan't. Um, introducing Leonardo da Vinci. <laughs> yes, and all of the people on, on planet Vinci. Vinci. Vinci, which is good because including like, Biff. <laughs> I thought it was beef. No, it's Biff. Biff, as in... Oh. Bullies are always called Biff. Yeah. Do you know I, that that, that name was... originated in Back to the Future? Like, no one else had ever been called Biff. No, there's, no, a... there's no Biff I before. guess because you don't want your kid to grow up to be a fucking bully. <laughs> 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 if you call your kid well, Biff, you're just waiting, you're just expecting it. Like... Is that really true? Apparently. Biff. Let me okay. look it up. It's, <laughs> it I, seems, I could also be talking out my ass. It seems more like it would be the nickname for something. Yeah, like Bill or something. Maybe it well, appeared in like kids... the Batman series as as a as a form of punching someone. The sound that it would make Biff. a bit. Yeah, there was a kids book, kids set of kids books, like early readers Biff. called Back to the Future. that had a Biff character in them. Okay, was it? Oh. And they bully? weren't a bully. They oh. weren't a bad person. They were just called Biff. Well, maybe they're bucking the trend. Maybe that's the whole. They were like reclaiming Biff. Yeah, for nice, for or nice kids. like you know, there's certain chosen one stories where it's like, but you're you're not chosen in a good way. You're the bad chosen one, and like the character has to fight against it. To uh. be like, no, I'm not going to be the Antichrist. I'm not going to destroy it. I'm not going to be Biff. <laughs> I uh, won't be as no. much as I want to beat up this nerd. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Like the big like main conflict is just this nerd going. Oh, well, actually, um, <laughs> oh, Frankenstein. Oh, Frankenstein's the doctor, and Biff really has to. <laughs> oh, nerds. Well, oh. I can't seem to find whether I'm right or wrong, so let's just assume I'm wrong and scoot right on past okay. that trivia. Okay. Also introducing. Uh, Animatronio! Oh, yeah, yeah. 
<laughs> Come on, he's, 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 he's pretty in like great. most of the episode. He is pretty Hi, great. Adam Atronio. <laughs> it is the same. Bye. <laughs> it is the same weird, like half New York <laughs> yeah, Italian accent exactly the as they use for Leonardo da Vinci. <laughs> <laughs> They're never on on screen at the same time because they would no, have the exact because it's same the same voice. because you know. You can't tell Italians apart. Just, by the way, the when same. he when he turns up the second time and he's under the hood, <laughs> I thought it was just going to be like a whole army of like the same looking and sounding robot, but they're all different. Yeah. Like, cause yes. I thought he actually had died. I was like, oh god, it's going to be a lot of Italian. I'm animatronio. <laughs> no, I'm <laughs> animatronio. That would be great. Um, so, uh, can you run down the plot, please, Mister Phil, of this episode? Okay, sure. Phil, can. duh. This is a, a fry. <laughs> This is a Fry and Professor focused episode. Yay. Um, that is all about how stupid Fry is. Yay. Oh. <laughs> so uh, Fry goes on, uh, Who dares to be a millionaire? Uh, loses on the first $1 question. <laughs> <laughs> He's vindicated later in that nails can be used to hammer yep. other nails. By himself. <laughs> By himself, <laughs> himself only. You can hammer any. Like, you can. Ha- uh, uh, well, I know. Doesn't it's he hammer. say traditionally used? I know. Traditionally used. Oh, says traditionally well, you could used. use anything really to force a nail in place. Y- yes, including other people. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, so he he fails miserably in front of everyone uh, who dares to be a millionaire, and everyone's like, "You're really stupid." Uh, he gets upset, and the professor explains to him. Why his stupidity is so abhorrent to him, Aww. Aww. and that's because he idolizes Da Vinci. Uh, and when he's showing him how much he idolizes Da Vinci, they find Da Vinci's final invention inside uh, Da Vinci's beard. Beard, which somehow is—is is that where our beard yep, is from? That's, that is where, where it comes baby from. Baby beard. That's where the beard from. and baby beard at the mm. top of this show comes from. Oh, there you go. Um, uh, that leads them into a wild puzzle chase. <laughs> Through Venice <laughs> and through not Venice, uh, Rome, yeah. uh, the catacombs, Future Roma, the uh, Pantheon. You are very charitable to call it a puzzle. <laughs> yeah, it's very silly. They they end up in in Da Vinci's uh, lost workshop. Yeah, um, led there in, inadvertently by Animatronio, the invention of Da Vinci, a, a random rat powered auton- automaton. Uh, from the Renaissance, um, they discover that all of Da Vinci's d- inventions go together to create a spacecraft, which then takes the Fry and the Professor to Planet Vinci, <laughs> where they meet Leonardo. And it happens to be he happens to be the dumbest person on that whole planet. Aww. The reason he came to Earth was to be to be smarter than everyone else. Uh, while there, the Professor discovers that he is dumber than everyone on that planet, and uh, Fry helps. Da Vinci build a horrible doomsday machine, <laughs> which is what the fi- his final invention was. Counterpoint: ice cream machine. Yes, it, it was. It's a byproduct. That been it great. makes ice cream. That would have been great. Uh, the machine almost goes on a rampage. It doesn't kill very many people before Fry attempts to stop it with a nail, but instead stops uh, it with his body. Uh, <laughs> it's so In one terrible. of many excruciatingly painful looking things that happen mm. in this episode. Yeah. Yeah. It's, uh, I, I would say, it's, this episode has its own top ten of like... Of horrible, body excruciating horror, moments. Yeah. People should have died. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, Fry delivers the moral of the episode, uh, which is that y- you're always going to be stupider than someone, so just make the best of what you have, hmm. uh, and the Fry and Professor go home. The end. Yay. The end. Um, yep. Fin. Now I fin. <laughs> fin. <laughs> that's, that's French. Yeah. I should, fucking, I should fucking know what's French and what's Italian. But you don't. So but I don't. Okay. You don't. Just Sorry. make the best of what, of what we have. Miss Scusa. <laughs> so there's a glaring omission. There's, I'm totally wrong about Biff. Because oh, okay. <laughs> Biff, Biff is one of the primary characters in Death of a Salesman. That was written in 1949. That's- a few, yeah. a few years so before. just makes a is cut. It, is it, okay, is it weird? This made sense in my head, but I was like, okay, so Death of a Salesman was written in 1949, and I know that Back to the Future is like an Use 80s. the plot It is of an it? 80s film, but because it's it set goes back. in the 50s, I was like, well, it was kind of around the same time. <laughs> You're like, ah. So that brings up a whole philosophical question. Like, if a form of media, if inside the world, if it takes place in the past, is that where it was truly written? No. 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 
No and. <laughs> no, no and stop talking. <laughs> but. <laughs> this, this is working great. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, followers of Da Vinci, what are our thoughts? I really, I had so much fun. I love this episode. This is so great, <laughs> ah! especially especially because it combines a lot of things I really love. Like I love Da Vinci. I remember going to one of the. They had a big exhibition here in Adelaide of, of all of his kind of inventions, and I remember going oh. there and being like, "Wow, this is fucking great!" Because you can. Th- this was like a golden time when art and science really intersected, and like it's truly, you know. A renaissance man, a man who who has like devoted himself to like not just art, like looking how art affects science and science affects art. I think the two things should be very married together, and and also that that bleeds into architecture and like all of these other forms. So I really love that. I also love how fucking silly it is, uh, and it just big. Th- middle fingers up to Da Vinci Code and just using yes. that as like, well, this was dumb, so why do we need to explain ourselves? That whole plot um, of like, they 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 get the Last Supper and they x-ray right. it the and legs. it has a robot in it and yeah. then they follow the robot to Rome and then they go... The Trevi Fountain That's thing. That's right. Yeah. It's Trevi. So s- Trevi. <laughs> Trevi Fountain. And then they like... They go through the sewers and they just end up in another part of Rome, which That's they could have right. just walked to. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. This like has been what it's what I've been looking for in a future Rome episode for a while, which is just a straight up adventure, mm. like really <laughs> leaning. <laughs> they into even the... point that out, right? Yeah. Just oh like... yeah, didn't we used to be a, <laughs> didn't a we used to be a delivery company? company. <laughs> it's so <Bye>. good. <laughs> that tickled me more. That like that's all I need from Hermes. Just that. Yes, is the one line he needs to deliver. Like, when was the last time we had a uh, story that was just the main four? Farnsworth, Leela, Brian Bender. Like, it's been a little it's while. It's been a while. Because um, obviously, like, the movies have been kind of, let's use everyone we got. Yeah, um, yeah. And none of them are based around a traditional kind of go to this planet and deliver no. a thing, right? No, it's... Uh, one of them kicks off with that when they go to the nude beach planet. That's, that's right. I think that's so. a big, big score. Yeah. yeah. Mm. It just it just feels like it's just a rollicking adventure that is batshit insane. It's really yeah. dumb. <laughs> I like the but inversion. But I think it's also very smart. Like, yeah, I, yeah, I yeah. find the... In contrast to our, our last episode, um, Proposition Infinity, like... And beyond. I, I thought this really sunk its teeth into actually... Uh, what can we do with this as opposed to how do we not offend not that they were not looking to offend anyone but how do we how do we deal with this so you know we So what we're do you think out, is, okay. is the central theme Well you shouldn't like shit on people uh, either way like Fry basically says it and I know it's to the point and and blatant but sometimes you need to do that with with the central core of of your media where he says someone's always going to be smarter than you like you, you can't you can't take it out on other people. You also shouldn't take it out on on you know the people below you and mm. say you're dumber than me. Like, but it's gonna happen, and you just have to be secure with what you got. That's that's kind of yeah. Yeah, it's it's elitism in both both. Yeah, it's it, both elitism, intellectual el- elitism, and. Um, Anti-intellectualism? Uh, anti-intellectualism yeah. as well. Both yeah. sides are Both shown to are be dumb. narrow and stupid. <laughs> yeah. 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 It um, takes a fry to come in and set it straight. I I'm, just go, this is stop. Just stop. Yeah. I'm going to stop it with my <laughs> soft, Look, body. soft body. <laughs> All right. So <laughs> he gets physically God, fucked yeah. in this See, like, episode. My first question was, so he comes back after two weeks. Also, Why is his head still bleeding? Like, So one of two things. Either <laughs> it is still, like, it's still after an open wound. After two weeks, it's still bleeding. Yes. Or has he just not changed that dressing for two weeks? No. I, mean, I assume does in the quite... hospital they would change it for yeah. him. Right? Well, also, I assume if it's still bleeding, they would have helped him. <laughs> yes. <Yeah>. It's either... <laughs> is Maybe... future medicine, like, really bad? I like, mean, probably. almost like 1980s technology. <laughs> yeah. that they well, isn't it, like, a lot of it is doctor-based? Like, uh, sorry, robot based, and they kind of don't really understand human anatomy. <laughs> <laughs> or it may, maybe it's so bad that it's like back to the medieval ages. It's like, no, that blood needed to come out. Yeah. We, you we, get too much blood. I mean, admittedly, he does get huge, hit by a huge hover bus. He should die. <laughs> he should the die. fact that he's not dead at all is probably. Maybe while he was coming home, he just opened something up. 
Yeah, he just got re-injured himself. Yeah. Just got hit by another hover bus. <laughs> His injuries in that scene are unrelated. Yeah, I do love, he's street smart, so maybe he looked one way before he got, and then coming back, he, he looked, looked the, the other. other way. Still got I hit by a bus. I did what they told me to do. I looked one way, then I, the other. I looked both ways. I was very upset because no one visited me in the hospital for two weeks. That is very upsetting, though. He's even worse injured in the... In the oh, last God. scene where he because has like He gets a, a nail a flung and into his oh, eye. His eye. Oh, I'm glad it didn't God. stay in his eye. No, I'm he glad just sort of too. pokes in. Uh, but still. And then he like f- he it gets swallowed up by the machine and the his, wrong way. Yeah, and he goes through the cogs. The and wrong his... way. <laughs> Backs do not bend that way. It's yeah, I can nice. attest. Although to that. Farnsworth's neck spun the whole way round. Oh god, oh. Farnsworth's Exorcist neck style and the sound it makes as it sort of collapses. Oh yeah, god. it gets thin as well. Like oh. it's, it's like a it's like a piece of dough. I, yes. I've never been that <laughs> uncomfortable with Farnsworth's body from when he after he'd come out of the um. Uh, the Fountain of Youth. And he oh, goes, yeah. I'm even older. Hooray. And his entire <laughs> crack, crack, spine crack. just collapses in. Yeah. It's yes. the same noise. It's just, it's gross. Yeah. <laughs> it's you do also realise how big his head is in situations like that. It's like, how is that neck fucking holding it's up? Not that? as big as Brano's. <laughs> oh. I want to know more about brain. I really do. <laughs> I want to know. Yeah. I, I, I have a question to pose. Yes. If you could do the Da Vinci thing, uh, sorry, the Leonardo da Vinci thing, and uh, DiCaprio. Would, well, sorry, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I love Titanic. Um, <laughs> would you rather be the dumbest person, like like big fish in a little pond? Or, yeah, oh right, or, yeah, or little fish do? in a big pond? I like his strategy. I think it's pretty pretty clear. I know he gets infuriated about people not being as smart as him, but, but I reckon time. I reckon it would be quite good for a while. Yeah. It's, there was a post on Reddit I saw recently. It was like if you could go Ooh, back Reddit. to if you go go back to 2000 BC, what could you invent from scratch? Oh, yeah. That would impress everyone. Vegemite sandwich. <laughs> <laughs> you take this yeast paste yeah, from yeah, making yeah. beer and then but you spread like, it on toast. not too much. <laughs> otherwise, it's shit. Uh, yeah, Looks I, like shit, too. I don't know. I, I find it kind of nice being around dumb people because you can teach them. Um, yeah. But I, I don't know. I, I find quite often in a, in a room I'm... Uh, usually the dumbest person. <laughs> well, not the dumbest, but like I'm a weird dichotomy where people think I'm very smart, and but I'm very dumb. So I get kind of Da Vinci's feeling. <laughs> I get it. I get that. Uh, oh, you're so, not dumb. Oh, you're not thank dumb. you. I did get hit by a hover bus. Yeah. <laughs> That just you means don't you're... have street smarts. I don't have street smarts at all. Um, but yeah, I don't, I don't know. It might <laughs> be nice to be the... I would introduce them to Two. sport. To different sports. Ah. ah, I've invented rugby. Yeah. <laughs> that is, well, that is a very like, you know, I'm, I'm thinking of this golden period in history. Not golden for a lot of things, but golden in, in terms of, yeah, advances in so- science and art and whatever. And like... It was a healthy approach to to sport as well. Like, it was mainly a way to get dudes naked and wrestle. But that's fine. I'm, I'm that's up for fine. that. That's, that's fine. That's good. <laughs> so I like the some of the uh, animation in this episode is really mm. pleasant, and the design work as well. I so love the design. Animatronio himself is really really cool, and yeah. then Just you've got all the wooden inventions that yep. pepper all the way through the design of the city the that whole, they visit. Yeah, it's the whole awesome. planet of Vinci is very. Jules Verne. Yeah, yeah. Very, it's really wicked. Very kind of, uh, yeah, uh, that time. If you imagine a, a, a Renaissance uh, um, steampunk It's idea. sort of like clockwork punk, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. I'm yeah. Not, yeah. 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 There's a, there's, Woodwork punk. Yeah. <laughs> Woodwork there's, there's punk. Wood li- punk. <laughs> there's, um, there's little details as well. So like the microphone has this wooden, f- yeah. wooden frame around it to yeah. keep everything in the same kind of feeling. Yeah. So I like the little things as but well. But it's it's great because it, it's also clearly there was a lot of love in this episode mm. because things like that uh, they must have taken a lot of inspiration from uh like you look at Leonardo's designs but also a lot of stuff in that time period. It wasn't just people were still inventing mm. and people have always been inventing and we have devices now 
that are a lot similar to things made back then. It's just they had wood to work with and, and water and other other mm. things as opposed to electricity to power mm. it. And I think it's really cool. Well, you look at Maya Williams, like when I talked about the book that she created, The Golden Hour. That's the first in a bun- in a series where Ooh. they keep time traveling to different, like you know, World War Two or as I said, the French Revolution. So she she loves her history. Yeah. So this episode's perfect for you can tell. That. You can absolutely yeah, tell. Yeah, I yeah. think she must. I, I'd be. Very keen to check out her books because I think you can tell that she not only has a love for kind of um, showing off the things that she's learned about, but also a really light touch. Mm -hmm. Like it's just a light, silly touch. Edutainment. Oh, edutainment. (laughs) You've done it. No. It is very. You've done it. That's how you get into the kids' minds. It does skip along this episode. It has a great pace. I think that's partially to do with the adventure format that they use as well, where they're like, oh, to the ship and to the and next to this. clue. And he's yeah. pointing at... <laughs> so everything, it everything... draws attention to the dong. <laughs> I love that joke. So. But it does. The lines of perspective. <laughs> That's the smartest thing he says in the whole episode. It really is. And he's right. <laughs> he's he's right. absolutely right. <laughs> There's also, uh, tangentially in the design, there's the octopus that lives in the Trevi Fountain. That yeah. thing is badass. I is, love that thing. Is that thing. also is that a, a, like an homage to Jules Verne? I feel like that, it is. Maybe. Yeah. What's the name? Uh, who's the Who invented the Cthulhu and all those kind of monsters? Lovecraft. He's, Lovecraft. He's a is bit that, is later. Is it like Lovecraftian stuff? Lovecraft Not really. isn't in the same kind of era. It, it doesn't feel like like the, explicitly yeah. Lovecraftian. It looks more like a, a kraken. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, yeah. I'm I'm gonna say Jules Verne mainly because he loved his his, uh, loved- you know, he's the father, he's the granddaddy of steampunk, and yeah, uh, <laughs> gave us a great Brendan Fraser but, film. But I, I will. <laughs> th- <laughs> I really love that when fight. it finally comes out. <laughs> yeah, that's right. No, 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 Journey to the Center of the Earth. Oh God, <laughs> Brendan I Fraser. Yeah, 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 yeah. About And the that. sequel with Dwayne Johnson. I completely forgot. I just and Michael Caine. Brain dumped it. Was it any? <laughs> was it any good? Look, mm. I mean, right into me. If you're Fry, you'd enjoy it. No, oh. take it. <laughs> I re- do you think Fry would? S- do you think Fry would like really get really like the Da Vinci Code as well? I I really enjoy. Oh, I reckon Fry would eat that up. Oh no, yeah. yeah. Like My if he could if he could get through reading. My, oh, that's whole true. Book. That's true. I feel like he'd, he'd like also the movie. he'd also eat up <laughs> National Treasure. Yeah, like that's kind National of his wheelhouse. National Treasure is the, the correct way to do the Da Vinci Code, though. Well, yeah, because it's Nicholas like Cage none it. of this is going to make sense. <laughs> Shh. Uh, I know we're basing Shoo. it around like Shoo. factual stuff, but it's not factual like <laughs> at all. And whereas Da Vinci Code is like saying all these bullshit things, but it's like, hey, Whoa. I could be right. Yeah, you know? yeah, it takes itself deadly Whoa. seriously. I really like their takedown of the Da Vinci Code yeah, actual book. Where he's looking at it in the um, in the basement of the catacombs. Let me uh, consult the <laughs> sacred text. <laughs> blah, 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 some <laughs> poppycock, blah blah blah. Yes. <laughs> Fibonacci, yeah. blah blah blah. But, <laughs> it's a very understated way of bagging the book. That is one of the things that made me furious about the Da Vinci Code, though, is how much people were just taking it on face value, and it's like, it's no, this is fiction. Work of fiction. <laughs> yeah. This is guys. Wait, were pe- did people? Go yeah. down the rabbit hole with the, that. Yeah, uh, people are so stupid. And, and look, uh, I get it because there are quite exciting things. Like it is exciting to think that Tom maybe... Hanks is the son, the descendant of Jesus Christ. <laughs> yes, that is very exciting. <laughs> I love it. Um, uh, but it's exciting to go. Oh, there's something painted under here. Or it's it's fun to look for those patterns. I yeah. think it's a big thing. And um, I was talking about ARGs with someone recently. I think it was you, Sean. Actually. It was me. ARGs, and it's because people make patterns. You only need to introduce something twice for people to start thinking. Mm, they connect the connected? dots. They connect the dots. Um, and people will start doing that even if you haven't done that. The whole Paul is dead. In the in the sure. Beatles album, yeah, yeah, yeah. like that's fun, and and I like the idea of it. I just I think it's too serious. Like the Da Vinci Code thinks it's so fucking serious, yes. and thinks no one has ever like, whoa, but like I've cracked this mystery. It's what like, if the no? Bible had a hidden message? Mm. Oh it's like do you remember th- we did an episode of Imaginauts yonks ago where I was talking about the the lizard man. Uh, what's his <laughs> name? Um, David oh, David Ike. David Ike. Yeah, and, and he's like saying things like. Who just go? So you got to like connect the dots, like you know, <laughs> United Nations, space, 
Those lizard are dots, people. yeah. You just got to connect it, people. You just connect them all up. I'm not going to do it for you. He's just not, say, he's not say quite words. got the mystery. Like, those things do have to be connected. You can't just say, like. <laughs> he did connect them. He drew the line from one word to the other. <laughs> <laughs> Bam. Connected. 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 All you got to do is get some, some, some red ribbon, <laughs> like, I mean, put some, put some <laughs> things on your wall, and there you go. That's how connected. you make a mystery. <laughs> it does have its drawbacks, obviously, with people thinking, like, anti vax and deep state and flat earth. But it it also has its fun side as well. Yeah. Uh, uh, <laughs> whoa, man. Whoa. 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 Because <laughs> people of, take it too far and too seriously, true, that's right? True. Do you? I learned about something recently, which is is maybe only tangentially related, but just go for go it. For it. <laughs> go for it. Go for it. Don't apologize. Um, Never. Uh, it's called uh, s- uh, contain pr- CSPs. I think CS. Is it, C- is it anti-vaccine thing? Is something. I can't, f- I can't freaking remember what it is. It's an acronym. A three-letter acronym. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and it's about like a shadow org- organization that finds weird, extra-dimensional and paranormal kind of objects. Okay. And then That's quarantines fun. them. And there's a whole wiki... Of these things, taking it deadly seriously. Uh, oh, right. Can, there are, like, thousands of them, and anyone just go on them and, like, go go and just look at the different entries. And they're, like, one of them is uh, a Buddhist monk whose heart only beats once every, like, ten years or something. Oh, okay. And he's just, like, kept in a room, and they occasionally go and consult him about things. Wait. I'm so sorry to disturb wait, you, Wait, wait, wait. I think <laughs> yeah. I know... What you're talking about? This is this is like a creepy pasta, right? Yes. Where it's an internet thing, and they're like, "Oh, all these, all these, either creatures or objects are all contained." I think it's SCP. SCP. That's right. Yeah, that's, that's really one. fun. Secure, yeah, because people contain, really, protect. Yeah, because people uh. really take that idea and they just fucking roll with it, and it's so fun. Because uh, there like, are thousands of articles, and I spent an evening just yeah. going random, random, it's random. It's really fun. And they're I really do diverse. Yeah. It is really fun. It's really fun. Um, um did you did you um did you spot the little fun benders function? A this episode? Mace the mace arm. <laughs> I yes, love yes. that. Yeah, his arm gets replaced by a mace and he just rolls with it. He's like, Yeah, this <laughs> works just as well. <laughs> it really reminded me of um uh you guys watch Adventure Time? First season. Yeah. Yeah, there's a bit where Finn gets like a cursed sword. It's like a kind of leaf sword and it and it permanently attaches to his arm. Um and he's like, Oh, okay, cool. And then there's just a wizard going like, no, that's that's not the way curses work. And he's like, I don't care. <laughs> it's great. I love it when it's like characters just, in, instead of being inconvenienced, they just roll go, with it. Yeah, yeah this works. Good. Right. It's, it's great. There's a lot of set off pay up, like set up an immediate payoff with jokes. And that's one of them. Like, yes, just what, we, piggybacks on the back of a set up payoff joke from the whole series, which is that. He always ties a string around a coin when he puts it in a slot. Yes, that's <laughs> I great. Was think- I was watching it going, is this I'm going to rip right off? <laughs> <laughs> and it did. It's and so pay off. off. Oh. <laughs> oh. And he just goes, oh. oh. <laughs> yeah, and he gets a mace arm later, so it's all fine. He is, Bender is great in this episode. <laughs> yeah. he, doesn't, he doesn't have a huge, like, integral part, but he has the fight with the octopus, which is awesome, especially he, when they all pull out a million guns. He really gives it to Animatronio when he says, why does a robot need a codpiece? Yes, that's exactly what I was going to mention. Like it's he, so good. I, I want God, an answer I swear to God, he only has three lines, and that's one of them. <laughs> They're all good. Um, I love, my one of my favourite jokes in this is just the, speaking of setup and payoff, the all the Rube Goldberg kind of uh, devices in, in um, Da Vinci's Lost workshop how they all have that Rube Goldberg like oh, you see so it satisfying. like you know it cracks the egg and then the egg falls onto the thing and but, but like, <laughs> like it, yeah it, Wait, did you it takes, the same episode takes Farnsworth <laughs> in no, one but, tube and goes through the other tube yeah. and then puts him in the seat <laughs> yes. like, oh, it's oh, great wow. it's so good I love watching those kind of things work so that that was a big love from me I, I just find it was very cute to have like a little it felt like a little daddy son adventure with Farnsworth and yeah. Fry up until he starts calling him stupid. But he's, um, he's like, always it, called him yeah, stupid. Yeah, but I just, I just love it. Just like this little adventure together. And I yeah, do like, a nice pairing. Yeah, I do like him together. I, it's just nice when Futurama just gets Pairs people up. Yeah, and goes, let's see what happens. Yeah, it, it makes really nice things. Once again, I hope we get Zoidberg and Bender. I need that episode. It needs to happen more often. We've got two seasons. (laughs) Their rollicking adventure. 
Speaking of callbacks, there's also a upgrade to the finger longer. Whereas oh. now as a weapon has two, two finger fingers longest. directly into Fry's eyes. Or <laughs> oh, it's another like potential death he has, just like a massive weapon going straight through his head. Oh, yeah. through yeah, okay. If it gone through the eyes into his brain, yeah. Yeah. But otherwise. We also surviving. discovered what Dr. Zoidberg is a doctorate of. Mm-hmm. Oh, art history. art history. I feel like that's been mentioned before. That's really has sad. It? I, I don't know like why. I just really pity, pity Zoidberg. <laughs> <laughs> that's a, that was one that gets you nowhere. <laughs> I do love that, like, that explains so much. <laughs> also, it's like, he, it's like, did he then, like, minor in complicated surgery? Yeah. <laughs> art history and I mean, surgery. I feel like if you were really good at art history, you might still have a better understanding of the human body than Zoidberg does. I feel like, yes. I don't yes. know. I don't know. Don't call me on this So one. he's a he's an art history... He's Surgeon. into art history, surgery, and comedy. Maybe he's... <laughs> that's Hannah Gadsby. Yeah. Oh, there you go. Mi- Minus surgery. Is she, I was going to say, is she a surgeon? <laughs> Uh, don't and know. minus being a Jewish lobster as well. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Okay. We forget. <laughs> it's hard to we know of. Some very important characteristics. Ah, <laughs> uh, those Jewish lobsters. You know, when I see Hannah Gadsby, I think Jewish lobster, but that's just me. I don't know. And if we're on Zoidberg, we have to mention Jesus Christ and his 12, 12 apostles. apostles. So, so. <laughs> and of course... My God. God. My God. Um, <laughs> I think we need a been, my God drinking game. It's because yes, it's it a must ca- be like 10 times. It must be because it's a Catholic. It's a Catholic episode. It's not, not only that, it's a Roman Catholic episode. Yes. So you know how many times you say, my, like, maybe not my God, but oh, you, you say my God. Madonna is one you use a lot if you're frustrated. Doesn't Animatronio oh, say Madonna. a little, he says porca, porca something? It's like porca mm-hmm. Madonna or something? Like, like pig, m- Virgin Mary, yeah. Yeah. It that's just, po- it's that's mostly all of the Italian insults. It's either like bitch mother of God or d- <laughs> dog God or dog mother. Or so it's, it's all that. Like, yeah. I feel like they slip it in. They, he, just, <laughs> he just throws out a swear. Yeah, no, you, you are right. I just didn't quite catch it in time. I have a gripe. Go. Where are they in the um the the tomb of um James? It, why is there a statue of Neptune in it? Why is why there, is there a statue of Neptune in the Vatican? Is that on, is that on is there Future a Roma? Pagan god in my Vatican. <laughs> was that in, was that when they'd gone to Future Roma, or was that after that? They're in, no, it's Rome. in They're in the Vatican. They're in the Vatican. Yeah. They're literally in the Vatican. And there's a big old statue of Neptune. And I'm like, this is not right. This is, <laughs> I did not just, even think of that. This is just wrong. He's, I get a Roman god, but a pagan god mm, in a Catholic terrible. fucking... In a, in a place... It's literally the center of the Catholic Church. I have a complaint. Go. They go in that spaceship for a month. <laughs> Where's the food? What do they eat and drink? <laughs> what? Where do they pee? <laughs> what ha- happened? How Leonardo. do they survive? Stink up in there? How Leonardo. do they have a month's worth of air? Do they eat each other? Leonardo. Like, just take little bits. Leonardo. Why do the wing? How can the wings propel them through space? Where's, Leonardo's how are they breathing had from a lot of, uh, had a lot of nibbles left in it. <laughs> <laughs> He's just got boiled sweets in his lab pocket. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. Farnsworth has a lot of pockets. So, <laughs> you know. Also, Farnsworth. Realize something. He has IED. What? An in, uh, what? An improvised explosive? Device. No, no, no. Intermittent explosive disorder. Uh. His like anger is not always proportionate to the situation at hand. <laughs> like he's so angry all the time. Is I think that, is that is that because he's an old man, or <laughs> do a lot of old men have IED? <laughs> I'm, I'm diagnosing Farnsworth with IED. Okay. As, so, as, as, as that was the, a real I'm thing. diagnosing Fry as dead. Yeah. <laughs> as the doctorate I have Again. in um, art history. Uh, <laughs> And, com- and comedy. I know. I diagnosing when I see cartoon it. characters. Yes. Yes. Um, I love help, the Farnsworth. the they duct tape the scroll down because it keeps scrolling up into itself. It just reminds me of any time you try and put a fitted sheet on a bed oh. <laughs> or fold oh. one. Oh, oh god! Oh. No. Oh. And it no. just folds the entire table. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's so good. <laughs> um. <laughs> yeah, delightful. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, Big Boned. Turns out Hermes just isn't Big Boned. He's just fat. He but, has a tiny skeleton. But also his yeah. skeleton ends well before By his, his thigh. limbs. Like his, <laughs> where his thigh is. How, so, does his, how do his shins stay? How is he, so support- <laughs> how's he supporting himself? Is it just like fat upon fat? But I guess so. Fat doesn't go in. Like, <laughs> you need bones. It's like, a stilt, it's like a stilt system, but just with like congealed... 
Yeah, yeah how was, he works is very up in the air I now. I don't get it. Maybe he must it have is a what, lot of cartilage. What Fry said, he's a potato man. Oh, wait, space I, get man. I get he it. I get it, though. Yeah. That's why he's yes. really good at limboing. Because he just He doesn't folds have up. bones. <laughs> <laughs> he just folds up he the fleshy parts. He doesn't have bones in, like, you know, his Most lower of his limbs. Bones. <laughs> Most. I want to cover Morbo <laughs> as host for Who Dares to Be a Millionaire. Please do. Because he is a great host. He's Prepare for he, pleasantries. He yes. is because Who Wants to Be a Millionaire and so many of those quiz shows just have this very, this like serious air of immediate tension. And it's like... Did you ever watch it with Regis Philbin? He was the original American host. <laughs> no. He's like, okay, are you ready for <laughs> Who Wants to Be a Millionaire? Yeah, that guy's <laughs> really angry. He really wow. is. Wow. He's he, got ideas. as well. They use him as a character on How I Met Your Mother and he literally like smashes through a wall. <laughs> like uh, the Kool-Aid man. Because, yeah, because uh, Barney didn't tell him they're trying to find the best burger in New York. And like, he's like, no, Regis, sorry. Uh, I, I forgot to tell you, we're at this other place now. And he's like, Ugh! and he like almost crumples the phone in his hand. <laughs> <laughs> he must be a really IED angry will man. get you. Yeah. <laughs> IED will get you. But I think it's also an effective rip on those shows in that there's always that fluff bit. Before it actually starts. Yeah. It was like, oh, so tell us about why you need this money. Are you going to go on a holiday with your wife? It, Just tell uh, me the it question. Reminded me Just, of... we all, we're all here for the questions. We don't yeah. care who this person it is. We want to see them embarrassingly my... fail. Fry's failure... Um... I'm just looking up some of the best failures on who Oh, uh, yeah. So, which of the following is the largest? A, a peanut. B, an elephant. C, the moon. D, a kettle. Uh, they selected B, an elephant. Uh, <laughs> that's a very... The moon's uh, tiny. It's, I can, it's up in the sky there. You can hold it between your fingers. Obviously smaller than an elephant. Right. <laughs> you heard it here first. Yeah. Oh, Duh. Okay. <laughs> There's something about that... That enjoyment of watching other people fail, fail I hilariously can't do that. badly. I don't know about like Ugh. I can't do it. I just, that's what this I, episode is about. I don't want to see people fail. I hate it. I Aww. hate it so much. Well, one Wholesome of Alan. one of oh. these episodes has to fail. So the question oh. that I'm going to oh, put no. you is: Which of these episodes <laughs> is going to be the winner for season six? Is it going to be Rebirth <laughs> or? The Da Vinci Code. How much of Regis Philbin have you much, actually watched? How much coffee? <laughs> <laughs> how much coffee did you drink before you recorded? I'm on my fourth cup. Whoa! Ooh, yeah. so that um, explains it. I am going for the Da Vinci Code. Okay. So Expl- I'm going to start it off. Show your working. Show your working. <laughs> well, um, no. Uh, this is a rollicking adventure. It is kind of like as far as... The- when I was growing up, I always loved the action adventure genre. So you've got, you know, Indiana Jones, Romancing the Stone, um, like those things. National. Just... <laughs> National. <laughs> Wait, what's the name of that movie? National Treasure. <laughs> National Treasure. Nicholas Cage. <laughs> National Lampoon's National Treasure. I just, the only thing I know about National Treasure is I'm going to steal the <laughs> Declaration of Independence. It's what most people know about it. <laughs> it is <laughs> the plot. <laughs> like it's combining two things that I love. It's like that particular genre and you're taking... Futurama, these characters, these beloved characters, and kind of streamlining streamlining the amount of characters you're using as well. Like it's just a very tight knit group with Farnsworth, Leela, Bender, and Fry, <laughs> essentially, <laughs> with a few great lines from Zoidberg um, and Hermes. I don't know if Amy says anything in this episode. God, if she did, I didn't even notice. I it. can't remember. I don't think she chimes in or anything no. about Fry being dumb. But oh, she says something like "shma." Don't be shmo shma. Oh, yeah. don't Gah. have a shmanurism. Yeah, yeah, she does say that. So yeah. you know, <laughs> there's a great, there's a great sci-fi premise in Alien Da Vinci. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and I was laughing all the way through, so I get my my laugh quota up through the roof. Alien Da Vinci. I feel like that is a theory. Alien Da Vinci? Oh, I'm sure I'm some sure people are yeah. well on top of there, that. There's surely a reason why they've done that. Like, it's a good idea in of itself, but I think it probably directly references some fucking crackpot. Going and, like, yeah, I'm sure. Oh, and it's, an, in, from the it's moon. an intelligent parody in the Da Vinci, the da Vinci Code. Da Vinci Code, what am I doing? <laughs> <laughs> what am I trying? <laughs> trying your best, George. Trying my best. It's trying like your when very someone's, living someone's my best life. ordering <laughs> off an like, Italian restaurant the, and they, the, they're uh, trying really hard to do it right, but the then divine they overshoot. Sea. I want a capricciosa. <laughs> Did I get it right? So, Did I get it right? Did I do it? <laughs> so my vote is for the Divine Psychide. <laughs> beautiful, beautiful. Bellissimo. Uh, yeah, I'm going to say Da Vinci Code because it's just fun. Da Vinci Code. 
Da Vinci Code. <laughs> Fine scene. Well, uh, yeah, it's fun. Um, I think the adventure format really just like propels it yeah. forward, propels it like a <laughs> like a <laughs> like a steampunk Vinci. ship into space <laughs> into the planet Vinci. Um, I love all the, the the reference in this in this one are like particularly my jam. Mm. Um, I love the Renaissance. I love art. I love science. Um. I really love Da Vinci as well, um, and I hate the Da Vinci Code. So this, like, not only <laughs> all the boxes. It, yeah, it pays homage to the things I love and shits on the things I hate, but in a in a really um, interesting way. In that, it, in using the Da Vinci Code format, they're able to um, excuse a lot of the silliness that they have throughout. And and the it silliness is just rampant. It doesn't punch down on intellectualism no. or anti-intellectualism. It has like a kind of even and hand it on has it. a good mm. point of like yeah. Someone's always going to think they're smarter than you or someone's always... G- yeah, like... It's bullying that's bad. Yeah. It's, it's dumping on other people that's bad. Yeah, and sometimes uh, being intellectual or whatever, it's not it's not as much of a virtue as people think mm. it is, you know. I know some really smart people who can be tremendous assholes um, and, and vice versa. And it's like, it, that, that's not and, the most important thing. And conversely, not being... That not being as intelligent as your peers is not the worst sin in the no. world. No, right? it's not. There's plenty of other honourable qualities. Absolutely. Like but also being what, honourable. Being what, a nice person. What they explore with Fry is that it's not just or like only that he's this dumb person. Is He's impulsive. And he often just speaks before he thinks about it. Yeah. Like, like that's what Homie says. Is like, you need to think before you say he... something sometimes. Just like, take a second. Mm. Yeah. And so at the end, he is like, oh no, actually... This is kind of wrong when I take a moment to think about it. Yeah. Mm. And I'm going to stop you. But I don't also, know how. But also Fry <laughs> clearly proves gross. he's emotionally smarter than than he's got a good, most of these yeah, people. Emotional in, intelligence. In that he's like, yeah, you guys got to grow up. Basically, yeah, stop. You're, you're, all of you are being dickbags. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Don't be a dickbag. Stop bag. it, and I'm going to stop it with my. Yeah, he's my, the hero. Yeah. My yeah. supple, fleshy body. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Phil. Uh, so, not that it matters, but I'm going to say rebirth. <laughs> it always uh, matters. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, I, I, I just think uh, putting them against each other. I think the use of the whole cast together mm-hmm. and being able to say this is where everyone's strengths are. Yeah. yeah. And even pulling in some of the secondary, secondary cast in terms of little bits of Brannigan and Whee! stuff like that. <laughs> um, just just to kind of get the whole of Futurama in together. It has a lot of the similar sensibilities in like the science is just unexplained wackiness. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that's a very similar kind of feel to it. They have and Austrian I... accents. Yes. Yep. <laughs> we will never know <laughs> why. And, and stem cells. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> just don't question it. Don't think about it. I, I, I love all of that and just the, the gooey the gooey stem <laughs> cell gunk. <laughs> it has some of it has a lot of similar similar similarities to it and it also has a clever plot in terms of the way it cycles around to the beginning again Uh, i think the episodes have the same strength same strengths but the rebirth is just got slightly more glee Mm -hmm. and more uh uh, energy and 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 goose to it not I, i think this episode is also a really good one uh for very similar reasons i'm glad you think it's good because it won uh, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it would be kind of awkward if you're like, no, this is shit. It's a terrible episode. I hated every second of it. So I think people who are smart should Scruffy? shit all, Jar, <laughs> shit all over dumb people. Yeah, when Scruffy hasn't been around in a while. He's on leave. He's cleaning. He just shows up when he needs to. Yeah. Yeah. Can't overuse Scruffy. You can't have him in the show every week. That would be yeah. bad. He was in all the movies. Did yeah, he appear it's in... almost too much Scruffy, actually. Did yeah. he appear in Rebirth? I don't think so. Uh, mm. Yes, he does. Uh. He's he's sweeping up the. I was going to say. Outside, outside. I was going to say. Oh, that's right. <laughs> but even even uh, two ships worth of explosions. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Just with one broom, very yeah. slowly. But despite that, I mean, also, who's who's going to clean up all the goo on the floor in Rebirth? It's got to be Scruffy. Scruffy yeah. afterwards. Yeah. yeah. Um. So, guys, next week the uh the new the new current champion, the Da Vinci Code. Or Vincey, as uh, no it's preferred to be <laughs> uh, known. Da uh, Vinci. How could? How else could you possibly fuck it up? Vinky. Da Vinky. Da Vinky Minaj. Da Vinci. <laughs> <laughs> da Vinci. Wow, you really, you really tickled yourself with that one. <laughs> oh, I 
love um, it so much. And see if you can uh, get my perfect pronunciation to what the, the layman might be calling it. So it is the the lethal in the lethal inspection is our next episode. Or as a layman would call it. <laughs> lethal inspection. Oh, you got it. You <laughs> nailed it, Phil. Was, you sent me a hard one, but You're, I got there. I got yeah, there. Yeah. Curveball. Um, great. Um, cool. So, guys, if you would like to hear more of this utter nonsense, um, please join us next week for the lethal inspection. But if you have anything you'd like to tell us about history, about art, about science, or just about what oh, you yeah. think about us personally as people. Send us in your own conspiracy theories about Da Vinci and, yeah. uh, and also the Bible. And uh... Are you the descendant of Jesus Christ? <laughs> <laughs> Come, come join our Facebook, uh, uh, like it for uh, to to get it in your feed so you see when we're doing new stuff. And by the time this comes out, we should start to see a few things about our new project as well. Ooh. So it's a great way to find out uh, what's going on with that as it develops. Oh, yes. And also the things that I was saying before, email baby beard media. Oh, right. Sorry. Oh, yeah, did yeah, I yeah. cut across that? Yeah. Uh, it's all right. <laughs> I'm so sorry. Uh, so email, email baby beard media at gmail.com. We got Facebook. We got uh, Twitter. We also got Instagram uh, where you can actually see us. So if you, you're thinking, hey, Who's who's a chat, attached to what voice? Um, who's yeah. got the best beard? Who's got the best beard? These are all things that you can check out on Instagram and also see some pictures of our upcoming projects. We're, we're sprinkling them through all of our, our devices. And if you like us uh, or hate us, doesn't matter. Give us five stars anyway. Be a good it person. It doesn't matter. It doesn't I, matter. Uh, <laughs> there's in, a thumbs up button. Hit that. Yeah, if there's in, a stars thing. Yeah, give us five of them because it's one. It's it's like one button you can press, and then you can just forget about it. <laughs> forget ah. about it. Beautiful. I love it. <laughs> Italian kisses from us is what you'll get if you do that. Mwah. 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 And until that time next week, we haven't done a voice. We haven't <laughs> every, done a voice <laughs> every episode. Until now. that time next week, uh, I can't cycle back. Oh no! Oh no! Voice, voice, <laughs> voice. Da Vinci. Oh. We could do a goodbyes in a Da Vinci. Yeah. Oh, okay. See, we bellissimo. double up. We double up. We double up. With Ciao, the voice Bella. And a say goodbye. Mwah. Yeah. So, okay. So, I have been, uh, I've been a Sean there. I've been, I've been Ellen the Adelaide. <laughs> <laughs> and I am a Machina Magnifica Filippio. Oh, bellissimo. <laughs> oh. Also, I gave away my last name, but in Italian this time. It's good. Uh, good. Mwah. Goodbye. Mwah. Arrivederci. <laughs> Ciao, ciao. What if we have any Italian listeners? Not anymore. No, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna to try and send this to my Italian relatives and be like, hey, Z- So it's just like English. 40 minutes of nonsense. Then they're like, are they trying to do yeah, us? Yeah, Zio Rosario. <laughs> Listen to this. You can learn your English from it. <laughs> I don't have coffee to wake up. I wake up to have coffee. Yeah. <laughs> Don't talk to me until I've had my coffee. (laughs) (laughs) Mondays, am I right?